Welcome to Contact. I'm Craig Elhunt. On today's show, we'll be talking with Garvin Cross, who has been, amongst other things, a firefighter, a smoke jumper, a stunt skier, and a repeller. Thank you for joining us, Garvin. Pleased to be here. Garvin, first let's talk about firefighting. What is a smoke jumper? Um, smoke jumping uh, basically uh, curtails um, people who are fighting fires in the forest regions uh, with, within BC and the Yukon and it's usually done by parachuting into forest fires as an initial attack crew. Mm -hmm. So uh, we go in and um, initial attack it by plane. Uh, they drop out two people at a time into the fires. Right. What, what type of planes? DC-3s. So there is a lot of people in the plane? Yeah, we usually have uh, eight people in the plane and then we uh, have uh, two spotters that includes the eight people and uh, they, they take, make sure that everybody is, uh, gets out freely and uh, is down onto the ground safely. Well, what heights are you jumping out at? We're usually jumping around 1,500 feet, so it's not a large distance to the ground, so uh, there's not too, many too much time for errors anyway. So. Do you have an emergency parachute? Yeah, we have an emergency parachute. and uh, I guess you pack your own parachutes? Or... Uh, sometimes we do pack our own chutes. We usually uh, determine a few people each at the beginning of the season to, uh, to pack chutes, and then the rest help, and we oversee the, the uh, packing of the chutes. All right. Is there ever been a tragedy jumping out of the... For um, there's been a few injuries as far as broken legs, things like that, but normally it's quite safe. It's a rigorous training se session that we go through at the beginning of each season, so it's uh, quite safe to be jumping. Well, when you're landing, I guess you're landing and doing the uh, military role? Or? Yeah, you're uh, landing. I, I'll stress again, uh, there is a rigorous training session at the beginning of the season, and uh, in that process, it's two weeks long, and we get up in the morning, and uh, we work until it's pretty well dark out in, in May and uh, we go right through the, the whole training process of learning how to, to roll and learning how to do emergency procedures and uh, it's uh, quite a good system. Well, landing in the rough ground must, be, uh, must take some kind of skill, uh, more so than say landing on the tarmac. Uh. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a little trickier but um, you have to uh, definitely uh, be prepared for it and that's the bottom line. And uh, of course, you have to land with both feet, uh, both feet, sorry, and uh, land on the ground that way, and go into a, a roll where your body weight gets distributed over the ground and not just in one point. And then you do a roll, and uh, you you do have protected suits, so you mm -hmm. uh, usually are fine with any little rocks or anything like that. What if you get hung up in a tree or land in a lake or a pond? Um, we, we're also trained in um, evacuation, self-evacuation from trees, and we have uh, a line which we carry with us that we can rappel down out of the tree, and that's to uh, detach ourselves from the chutes and then later retrieve the chutes uh, when we've finished our initial attack on the fire. So it's, um, it's quite a system. It's quite what, interesting. What about landing in a lake? I don't know if that happens that often. but um, We're, once again, trained. Uh, we go to a swimming pool at the beginning of our training sessions, and uh, we're thrown into the water with our Kevlar suits, which are, uh, and helmets also, which um, keep us a little bit buoyant, our heads a little bit buoyant in the water, and the chutes are thrown over top of our heads, and we normally work our way from the smaller seam to the wider seam, which is where the bottom of the chute is, and uh, you just slowly pull it over your head so that you can uh, find it when you find the water freely, get out of the water, and then you pull in your chute. Mm -hmm. Once you hit the ground, what do you do for equipment? Now, are you carrying it with you when you jump out of the plane? or? Um, basically what happens is we, when we leave the plane, um, we carry with us a, a helmet, which is inside. Uh, we have a boot bag, and it's on our leg, and we carry a helmet and a radio, and once we touch to the ground, we then uh, have one of the fellows radio up to the plane, and we have a cargo drop, which is uh, the, when the plane comes around, circles, circles us once, and then comes in about 200 feet above the ground, and drops a cargo chute, which is uh, filled with water pumps, uh, shovels, axes, uh, food if we have to spend the night in there, mm -hmm. whatever. So you often do camp out, or is...? Um, normally, it's uh, more of an initial attack crew. Uh, we're, we're based in the Yukon or British Columbia area. 
for uh, initial attack, which means we come in, we uh, parachute onto the ground, we then uh, build a helicopter pad, and from there we uh, bring in helicopter people to uh, fight the fire, and we're pulled out again and to another region where they need us more mm -hmm. at that time, yeah. So it is quite, uh, quite intriguing that way. What company were you working with? I was working with a contract crew to the government, which was called uh, Kusawa Contracting. And uh, they've got also a Pell group in uh, British Columbia, and now it's just uh, the smoke jumping goes on in the Yukon around mm -hmm. and based out of Whitehorse. Mm -hmm. When, say, on a, an average fire, how many hours could you possibly work? Well, that, uh, that really depends. It can go from anything from one hour to build the helicopter pad to uh, 24 hours, or if they keep you on, if there's no other fires in the region, they'll keep you on possibly for a week. So it really depends on uh, what the, the extreme uh, conditions are at that time, fire hazard wise. Now they want you to be in tremendous shape for this. What's the reason? Just the fighting the fire? Uh, there's a lot of definitely physical uh, stress that goes on and uh, at the beginning of uh, the uh, training session it's a two-week system and you're up for 10 hours a day and you're doing push-ups, training, uh, landing rolls. It's a strenuous job so there's no doubt about so it. So you've got to be in shape before you uh, get there? Yeah, I would uh, recommend if anyone wants to go and try out for a job like this to be in excellent shape and uh, to carry it right through and to, to stay in shape. You'll have no problem staying in shape once you get the job. Right. Yeah. What about repelling? What's the difference between repelling and s smoke dumping? Repelling is done uh, with different helicopters and it's uh, a rope that actually you repel out of the helicopter to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, there, are a, there is a government crew which is called Rap Attack and uh, Kusawa Contracting also does the repelling. And uh, Kusawa uses a smaller helicopter which is a 206 uh, Jet Ranger and uh, which carries two people plus the spotter and it's a smaller initial attack crew so you you hover over an area where the uh, fire is and repel down to the ground now when you're repelling down does this take uh, a certain amount of skill and that you don't want to upset the helicopter because you're using a very small helicopter. yeah if you're using a small helicopter you have to be uh, extremely careful to be t with, with under 185 pounds is the limit actually for per person and uh, you also have to be very smooth because uh, the helicopter pilot can feel any uh, tugs or anything like that that are other, out of the usual. So um, they really uh, train you at the beginning of the season. How high can you be up when you're repelling? I most guess as of high the, as the highest tree? Yeah, well, most of your ropes are 250 foot uh, repelling ropes, so you can't normally go higher than that, but you don't need to uh, generally unless you're on a steep slope. But um, Normally, you're, so you're going about in the Yukon 100 feet or 150 feet, and in the Revelstoke area or the British Columbia forest where the trees are a little higher, you're uh, you know doing 250 foot repels quite mm -hmm. often. How do you get the rest of your equipment down? Um, from a helicopter, it's a little different than the uh, smoke jumping plane. Uh, we have a net that is called the cargo net underneath cargo sling underneath the helicopter, and it's strapped on. And uh, with a little mechanism, we can move it onto the repelling rope once the people are on the ground, and they signal it down and the uh, spotter in the helicopter can uh, send it down to the ground and it has uh, a few wraps on a sky genie which is this is called an, a mechanism which allows it to free fall down to the ground at mm -hmm. a very slow speed how can a person get involved in smoke jumping or um, i think your best method would go through the government or kusawa contracting and that uh, as far as there is another company available i'm not sure what the name is um, but you can go through the government or Kusawa Contracting, which is located in Vancouver. Forestry Department, I guess. Forestry Department, yeah. I think that would be the best bet. You've also been uh, quite a skier, and you've actually turned it into a lucrative hobby. Can you tell us hmm. how? Well, I started very young, uh, about three and a half years of age. And uh, through the years, I've uh, been over to Europe, and um, I've started to action ski model, which is uh, not per se a model for skiing, but... Uh, or the action where you, where a photographer takes pictures of you while you're uh, skiing down the mountain. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it can be quite a, a well-paying job at times, and other times you have to give and take a lot so that you can get your face around and uh, mm -hmm. get known in the industry. Do they also give you suits and skis and boots and things like that? Well, um, it takes a few years to normally get set up that way. If you're working with photographers, of course, that helps. Um, another process is to be racing, of course, and you get sponsorship that way. Um, I, I took it from the angle of uh, working with photographers and uh, you never get anything for free so you really have to work hard with them to uh, produce some, uh, some sort of work for the company that you're doing so to show them pictures uh, along those film, film work, things like that.
Now you've done the modeling in conjunction with stunt skiing. Can you describe stunt skiing for us? Um, stunt skiing is quite interesting because it's actually more uh, extreme skiing or uh, cliff skiing and uh, you're labeled a little differently. I, I imagine if you were to work in the movie industry they'd call you a stunt skier. Um, it's uh, it's quite interesting. You're usually skiing quite steep slopes, uh, up to 60 degrees in slope. Uh, hazardous conditions sometimes where you have to climb up to the slope and then ski down it or uh, go mountaineering, that sort of method. Or cliff jumping is just uh, basically doing anything from 10 feet to 80 feet, 100 feet on your skis. So. <laughs> what are some of the major things that can go wrong? Um, I think you just have to be very prepared and know your own limits because there's a lot of people who do go out and get hurt. Um, I've been fortunate enough not to get too, too banged up or anything. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, just being safer than others or just knowing my limits. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people also who, who do know their limit who are doing it and still aren't hurt. What are some of the precautions you take before a stunt? Do you check out for avalanches or...? Certainly we, uh, we dig snow pits which is uh, one of your basic avalanche uh, uh, initial things to do when you're going out and that's to, the method there is to dig a pit to uh, evaluate the snow conditions to see how safe they are in that area. Um, with extreme skiing you have to uh, definitely know your snow conditions. Well, when you're going off a 60-foot cliff, what's the difference between that and ski jumping? Is it the same thing? You have to get your weight forward and uh, um, use the skis as an airfoil? Not necessarily. Uh, it's not, not like a Glendy jump at all. You've, you definitely want to land with your weight to the back a little but to the side so that you can uh, compress the jump um, not so much uh, in one point of your body but with the whole body so you're, you're absorbing the, the shock instead of just landing on one point. But uh, normally you're doing it in deep conditions, deep snow conditions where you have a pillowy landing mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you would, wouldn't want to do it in hard conditions at all. Now you also did a little bit of ski, speed skiing. Can you tell us about that? Now that is... Uh, that was, uh, yeah, that was quite interesting. Um, I went out for a few winters and speed skied. I went to Europe and uh, I wanted to try my hand at going fast. And I, What's the difference between speed skiing and downhill skiing? Downhill skiing? Uh, downhill racing is a course, actual course, which is set up through gates, uh, larger turns, and speed skiing is uh, a slope which is groomed straight uh, down usually uh, some sort of couloir. In uh, Europe is quite big and in Canada it hasn't uh, really taken off or the states but um, well, it's, it's almost like steep. a straight drop isn't it? Straight drop yeah it's it's almost uh, it's faster than free falling on parachutes really? so it's, yeah, it's quite incredible they're reaching now uh, since I've been out of it uh, they're hitting up to 230 kilometers an hour uh, when I was involved with it they were going about 200 210 kilometers at that time yeah that is something now you're over in Europe and you're telling me the some of the differences between the skiing hills over there. Let's compare, say, some of the resorts you went to there with, say, Whistler. Well, if we were to compare it with Whistler, um, you could say that some of the resorts in Europe would probably be about ten times as large, which is uh, quite magnificent and uh, it would be similar to skiing from Vancouver to Squamish uh, throughout the mountains. So there's quite a distance. It, uh, I remember recall one incident uh, where I uh, took off first thing in the morning at 8.30 when the lifts opened and traveled as far as I could to the boundary of the mountains and back and I was back at 3.30 in the afternoon and that was going fairly full tilt so it, uh, it's a quite huge area. Yeah. Amazing. When you're uh, doing your stunts, are you doing them for modeling companies or are you doing them also for movies? Um, I've skied in a few films right now, more local productions than uh, I have gone out on an international level and uh, hopefully that'll, that'll come through. Um, I'm uh, basically working more t on the action modeling than I am with the uh, stunt skiing. Mm -hmm. But uh, if there are jobs available, like anything, you try to branch out and take as much as you can. Now, you've also become involved in other types of stunts in movies. Can you describe some of them for us? Um, I got uh, involved with the industry about two years ago when a friend called me up and uh, wanted me to come and join a group with him. And uh, he knew I had done a lot of cliff diving and uh, extreme skiing and things like that. So he felt that I was a, a good candidate. And uh, some of the things I did was I worked on one film where um, I was exploded and uh, mini tramp work, uh, car hits, um, being shot into the water, things like that. You know, your normal sort of everyday thing, but... <laughs> What's a car hit? A uh, car hit entails um, a car driving along the street, whether it's uh, normally a, a set speed around 30, 30 miles per hour or less, and um, where uh, it actually hits you uh, on film it looks that way anyway, but you're actually rolling over the car uh, doing a, a continuous roll so that you're not hurt. So 
So do you roll right from to the back of the car, or uh, no? Generally, <coughs> off to the side of the car. Uh, you the, by the time the car passes you, you you know you're on the ground and uh, safe out of the way. And do you feel much impact? You can if you uh, if you don't do it completely right. You'll definitely get you can get hurt. Yeah. You normally pad it up, uh, back pad with elbow pads and knee pads, and uh, mm -hmm. just to make sure it's ever, it's very safe. For um, the explosions, what type of uh, material are they using? Are they using um, dynamite or uh, well, they bring in a napa, nap, napalm or napa gas, and um, they have people who uh, are special effects people that uh, I'm. I don't really know a lot about that uh, end of things, but they have special effects people that come in and to set up the. Uh, explosion and they have wires and uh, of course you're over all, you're always overseeing uh, your stunt because you don't want to be hurt and to make sure you're you're well out of the way of the flames and things like that and uh, I think you just have to be uh, very careful in situations where there's explosives being used you're getting most of the lift from the tra all of the lift lift I guess from the trampoline yeah we're using uh, many tramps in some uh, circumstances others were uh, jumping over the railing by ourselves if you if it's a fall off of a building things like that an explosion behind you uh, We'll, t we'll take a dive, but generally mini tramps are used for explosions uh, well, to get your air from. What are you landing on, uh, boxes or um, Yeah, it depends. Boxes? If it's a small fall, you can land on the ground and uh, you have to train yourself uh, how to fall properly, of course. Uh, we use uh, cardboard boxes, which are set up. Um, also, um, airbags, which uh, are for your higher falls. and. Uh, they're very good, good things to have, of course, but um, sometimes it's a, a little expensive to get an airbag out, so you use boxes. Right. Yeah, so it's quite interesting as far as falling goes. Um, you've also been involved just a little bit in the movie industry. Can you tell us about that? Um, I've just recently... Uh, as, as an actor? Yeah, as an actor, well... <laughs> Um, just recently in the last year began acting and uh, I've done a few things and I'm just branching out and trying to uh, get as much uh, experience as I can right now and uh, try to uh, get to know people and show my face around and uh, get them to accept that I am an actor in town and another actor coming up. Well, it, it seems like a lot of actors are doing a little bit of everything in, in our BC movie industry. Is this, is this true? Or? I think the industry in British Columbia is a little different than the American one where you uh, you have to really uh, be available and also versatile here where they, uh, I, I think they're more at, at, apt to uh, take an actor for an acting job and a stunt person for a stunt job in the States, whereas uh, for stunts and acting, I, I believe they go in hand up here. It's a little, I think it would be a little better and a little bit to your advantage if you could do both. Well, are there actual stunt schools in BC or? There's not any stunt schools uh, available in British Columbia, but there is one in California. I'm not sure uh, how it operates. I've found a little bit of information on it, but uh, the group that I uh, started off with, which is Stunts International, uh, we would uh, train and we still do go out and train together um, every weekend, uh, either one day a week, and uh, pursue stunt car driving and uh, things like that, trampoline work. There's a, how many stunts, uh, stunt companies are there in, in BC? In British Columbia right now, there's uh, two companies, which is one is Stunts Canada and one is Stunts International. And uh, Stunts Canada has been around quite a bit longer, and Stunts International is just getting off the ground for the last two years. What are some of the more interesting stunts that you have um, have seen, maybe not been involved in yourself, but um, um, I know in one, one of, one of the chaps jumped off the Granville Street Bridge about three weeks ago. Yeah, Ray Pichette, uh, he took uh, a dive off of uh, Granville Street Bridge with on ropes, of course, with a descender, and uh, I think those are, are the most exciting, exciting uh, stunts to, to be done, you know, the uh, falls, high falls and things like that. And uh, un unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity yet to uh, take a big fall. I've done small falls, but uh, you just have to get your face known and uh, shown around. And uh, mm -hmm. what's a descender? How does it work? Is it like stretching cords, or is it? Uh... Yeah, it's uh, it works on a, uh, a turntable uh, system where you uh, it it actually is hooked up to a harness on your body and f and fed through your clothing, and then put over top of the harness, and you so that you can't see the rope uh, coming from your body, and it, it gradually slows you down. So it, uh, when you launch your... Uh, so it's like a drum with a brake on it. Yeah, yeah, I like a drum with a brake. And it, uh, after uh, so, far, so far down, it, it begins to slow you down. So it's a, a general uh, slowing process. Well, this has also become a, a sport, hasn't it, where they're um, actually jumping and using bungee cords? To yeah, uh, the bungee cords is a little bit different. It, um, it is an um, elasticity type process where everybody has, um, has w woven elastic type bungee material into a, a longer piece of rope, shall we say, and uh, 
They use it to jump off cliffs and bridges, and uh, it, it basically is tied onto a harness also. A lot of people use harnesses, and uh, you jump off a bridge, and it uh, slowly stretches out, and then it brings you back up to the, uh, to the spot. You've got a friend, actually, that has jumped off the Eiffel Tower, haven't you? Yeah, he, uh, Henry Van Ash is uh, one of the premier uh, bungee jumpers in the world. He's from New Zealand. Uh, I met him when I was speed skiing, and he, uh, he was jumping off the Eiffel Tower, the last word I heard, and uh, he's quite a genius. He calculated his, uh, the bungee cord. He makes his own and uh, within feet of the ground, so that on his full stretch, he was uh, touching arms with his girlfriend down below. <laughs> so quite... <laughs> That's a little bit scary for me, but uh, it's quite interesting it, at the same time. Take it to the limit. Yeah, yeah. Where, um, where do you see yourself going? Are you going to uh, concentrate more on the stunts or more on the acting or I'm uh, definitely... You're, uh, you're going in so many different directions. Yeah, it's, um, I'm starting to uh, get known as far as an action model goes in, uh, in the Whistler area. And uh, if anything comes up, I uh, will definitely go out. Uh, I'm sh I'd like to uh, pursue the acting a lot more. It it's quite a challenge. Uh, I've always been very athletic, so I'm not as concerned about putting 200% uh, in into, uh, into the stunt work at this time. But uh, the acting is where I'm really trying to ground myself. Are you still training though for the stunts? Keep oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Uh, every uh, every week I'm out doing something. You know, climbing uh, or windsurfing or uh, you know just uh, working with the trampoline in the backyard. So it's what what type of physical training do you do apart from that? Are you stretching and yeah, lifting doing weights? Some stretching. I work out at uh, the weight weight rooms and uh, throughout town, and uh, it's just a good good system to be well well advanced as an athlete uh, or an athlete goes and uh, just be well prepared for anything that might come up in the future. Mm -hmm. If a person wanted to get involved in stunts, what would be the best um, road for him to take? Should he get in touch with these companies or should he go to a school in California? Or? Boy, it's, uh, it's so difficult. I'd say n don't even try, but <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's, uh, I would say to uh, contact each group and uh, just send a resume and be prepared for uh, a frustrating wait because it is a long process. It's not easy. It's, uh, you have to definitely prove yourself in the industry and to, to be persistent because uh, it's just a hard industry to break into as far as stunts go. You know, I've only been in a few years and I've uh, only done a few, few uh, stunts uh, in movies and uh, just you have to wait. Have you ever done a stunt that scared you? No, nothing yet. I'm, uh, I guess a little bit demented, but <laughs> you did a uh, movie out in Squamish, uh, Empire of Ash. Uh, Empire of Ash, which was a um, a non-union film at, at that time, and uh, which was a few years ago, and uh, we basically used it as a training field. There was about ten of us that were uh, newcomers to the industry, and uh, we did about twenty days of work as far as stunt people go, and uh, um, our gas and uh, lodging was covered, and uh, mm -hmm. we went out there and worked every day as. 20 days in a row. And now for an established stuntman, the pay can be reasonably lucrative, can't it? can be lucrative, definitely. Um, it's, uh, you're taking your bumps and scratches and falls and uh, so uh, you know, you have, you're taking the risk, so you're getting paid well for it also. Are they expecting more out of stuntmen now than they were, say, in the 1920s? Um, some of the stunts you see then, you've got to wonder how they survived now. Yeah, um, I think they've gone a long way as far as safety goes. It's, uh, it's very safe if you look at everything and um, you're going over it with the stunt coordinator at that time and the people who are rigging everything and uh, it would be definitely well advised to uh, know how to rig certain, certain falls and uh, if you're doing uh, rope work and, and things like that to definitely look at it and, uh, in theory and in physical. Or is the um, stunt organization, or the, uh, the, is there a union? or? Uh yeah, well, uh, Stunts or? falls under ACTRA, which ACTRA. is the uh, acting union also mm -hmm. at the same time. And, uh, of course, you have to, uh, it takes six permits to get into the ACTRA, and you have to work on union films to get your uh, six permits mm -hmm. to get into the union. What do you do for hobbies? Obviously, you don't have much time, <laughs> but uh, you're telling me you also do some sailboarding. And yeah, I'm a windsurfer. I uh, began windsurfing about three years ago, and uh, I've just started to recently get into the wave jumping and attempting uh, barrel jumps, things like that. I'm just uh, You spend some approaching. time down the gorge, I believe? Yeah, uh, I try to uh, make it down for a month every year at the beginning of the season, and then uh, a few other side trips to get down there. And, uh, and uh, How does that compare to Squamish? Squamish is pretty good. Uh, for a local area, it's... Um, Squamish is a little bit limited as far as the area and the wind. You're usually on a 5-5 sail, which is a 5-meter sail. 
and uh, and down at the gorge, for instance, it's more of a, uh, a smaller sail. General range is uh, four or five area. Mm -hmm. A little stronger winds, uh, waves or swells, and um, whereas Squamish is uh, more of a slalom area with uh, flatter water. How about your acting? Uh, you're taking a course right now. Yeah, um, I'm presently enrolled with uh, Alex Brahansky, and uh, his uh, theater school is uh, probably the best in town. I. I would recommend anyone to contact Alex in town. And uh, How many days of the week do you study? I'm down three days a week, and uh, I'm studying five to six days a week. So it's, uh, I'm putting every bit of energy into it at this time, and uh, hopefully I'll, uh, I plan to keep doing that for at least five years to really work super hard at it. All right. Do you uh, plan to keep your skiing up while you're doing this? Um, my skiing is it's getting a little more difficult to uh, ski as often as I did because I'm working so much as far as... Uh, pursuing the, the movie industry and uh, it's it's a little difficult to uh, find time to do it but uh, have you done any modeling or anything like that locally say on grouse or see no Whistler or? is generally the area that I have done the modeling work for the action modeling and uh, you know a few pamphlets out for Whistler and uh, REI catalog things like that so right. it's, it's quite interesting yeah. hmm. so you're hoping in the end to be an actor a stuntman well <laughs> yeah it's um, I really like the uh, the challenge of the acting at this point, and uh, I definitely like the stunt work to keep the adrenaline level up. Um, I would hope that they could both work together, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. Hopefully, it'll all uh, work together. Yeah, it's quite difficult. Well, for contact, we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you for joining us, Garvin. Thank you. Please join us again next time. Pretty soon I'll be scratching for you.